Good morning, Teach Better family. My name is Katie Miglin, and I have the amazing Joshua double underscore stamper to kick off your first Friday of April, right? Yeah, it's the first Friday of April. We, I can't believe we're in April. We've got so many things we're going to talk about today, but we are so glad you are here. Get your cup of coffee, get, drop some comments in the chat, send us some love, and we'll be right back. Good morning. Good morning, Josh. Good morning, Teach Better family. My name is Katie Miglin, and I am kicking off your fabulous Friday with Joshua Stamper, where we are live with Teach Better today every single morning at early every early. day. <laughs> so early. 7 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m., 6 a.m. I don't know, whatever time. 5 a.m. Yeah, exactly. We're just glad you are here. And we are super excited today. We've got kind of a fun topic, but Josh, mm -hmm. how is your first week of April going? Good, but I don't like that it started off April Fool's on Monday. Yeah, that was okay. like cool. Well, my my kids are to the age now where they actually know that it's April Fool's and my middle boys specifically, because I have a whole crew, mm -hmm. are now very excited with pranks and trying to find ways to just, you know, yell April fools and not that they got us in any way, but right. it was just constant all day, all day long of trying to <laughs> prank their siblings or the parents. And so I'm just glad that's done with and mm -hmm. that we're now to the end of the, <laughs> the week, right. but I didn't love starting off Monday that way, especially with spring break. Yeah, that was the thing. A lot of schools we work with had spring break last, like the they were done a week ago, essentially. And so yeah. that was like the first day back. Plus, if you're someone that celebrated Easter, Easter kind of throws a whole like yeah. sugar high in there. So coming back on a Monday, if you've had a, if you were just getting done with spring break and you celebrated Easter, like Monday was going to be a mix. We luckily are in the spot where our kids know what it is, but can't execute anything well. So it was like. <laughs> Did you put your backpack away? No. Haha, <laughs> April Fools. <laughs> right. You know, it was just like that kind of stuff. So like we totally. can dodge a lot of it. Um, but I would love to know if you are a teacher. We did hear from some teachers that were pranking their students or were doing fun stuff, even admin. If mm -hmm. you did some pranking in your school, can you drop it in the comments so that we can get a good laugh? Because obviously we were not at the other end of it. <laughs> and we can just laugh with you. But yeah, I I heard some teachers that were like ready to go. I know my daughter's teacher gave her a fake spelling test with made up words. Nice. And um, so, yeah. So, Josh, did your kids' teachers do anything? I didn't hear of anything that went down. I think <laughs> I think everyone was extremely tired because our spring break was last week. So um, I know my two oldest going to high school were just dragging Yes. I literally had to push them into the car uh -huh. <laughs> to get them going. Um, they were not prepared mentally or physically. So I, I feel like what I heard was the teachers were feeling very similar. Yes. Yes. It, I mean, it was just, it's a hard time of year anyway. Um, but yeah, I always feel like the Monday after Easter, even if you don't necessarily celebrate, it just feels like it's a busier weekend for a lot yep. of people. And so that did add, plus we were the same way our spring break had just ended. So it was just a long day. I was like mm -hmm. early bedtimes for sure. Um, but the good news is many of you, you're on like the home stretch. I know mm -hmm. we've got like two to three months for many of our schools. So just know we're here to support you. The days are getting a Definitely. little longer. So hopefully you, there's some things to kind of look forward to as we kind of get to this time of year. I honestly, like, I feel like March is hard. There's like testing, it, there's just, it's behaviors are a problem. There's some like, you know, kind of negative vibe stuff. But I did feel like once you kind of turned the corner in April, like you could take classes outside if that is something that your campus allows to just do some outside learning or just to be able to enjoy the weather. Like you leave work and the sun is still maybe up or is up for a little bit. 
Um, and I just, I don't know, like award ceremonies, concerts, like all the end of the year stuff, just focus on the positives. And that is, that's like the stuff that always brought me joy. So hopefully you can find some joy in that. Yeah. I love the, the end of the year was great because a lot of it is celebrating folks and their accomplishments, accomplishments yeah. too. So like, you know, you had your, your bands and they were executing just like gorgeous songs where yes. you remember, especially in middle school, like when they first start the year, they sound terrible. <laughs> like, let's be honest. And the magic that occurs so quickly, um, you know, with those winter concerts, but then by the end in the spring, like they're just mm -hmm. amazing. And then the theater too. I remember those productions being cool. so amazing. And then also just having those ceremonies to, to recognize all the wonderful things that our kids are doing throughout the school year. So um, plus the energy too of like, you know, just concluding um, yeah. we, we all the festivities at the end of the year too of, of our eighth graders graduating from our campus to moving on to the high school and the excitement level um, that was with that um, mm -hmm. having the parents involved. So I think there's a lot of things to look forward to in the spring. In addition to the fact that it's getting nicer out, <laughs> mm -hmm. you actually see the sun. Um, so yeah, fun, fun and busy time. Um, but yeah, I'm with you. There's a lot of positives that are occurring right now. And um, we only got a couple months left. Yeah. Yeah. Just pour into your students. Honestly, I feel like that is something that is always, you always had to have that reality check of like, you've been with them for so many months, but you're down to like the last few weeks, months, whatever it ends up being, you know, like whatever your schedule is, but just like know that these are your last opportunities to make a lasting yeah. impression and to change a student's life. So mm -hmm. focus on that. Don't focus on the negative things. Cause there's, there's, it's very easy to find the negative right now. Yeah. So kind of set that aside and look for all those positive moments. And yeah, I'm, I'm excited to hear what kind of people are doing these last few months. And I love seeing the pictures, like you said, of all the positive mm -hmm. things that are happening. So yeah. let's keep it going. Hey, Josh, we, I have a fun topic for us to discuss and it involves something that's behind you. Do you want to jump into team talk? Sure. No? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not your podcast. All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> and welcome back. We are about, I don't know, halfway through-ish our Teach Better Today, where we go live every single morning on all of your favorite streaming platforms. My name is Katie Miglin, and I'm with Josh Samper, and we've had a great conversation about positive things that are happening in the spring. But Josh, we had a listener question that I feel like spiraled when I kind of pitched it to you, like spiraled into other things, a kind of a bigger, broader topic. But essentially, someone asked, like, what are books that teachers read? And I know on Admin Mastermind, we talked about this, I don't know, a while ago, just about like what teachers or yeah. educators consume as far as do you always listen to education podcasts or do sometimes you listen to that, you know, crime podcast or, you know, gossip, whatever. But this is specifically in relationship to books. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool to highlight some books that we from authors in our community, but also just like books that we're both interested in. And we'd love to hear kind of your comments and thoughts, drop those in the comment section. So Josh, can I ask you first, if you are going to pick up a book to entertain yourself, what kind of book would you pick up? To entertain? Mm -hmm. Well, typically it's not education. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's like a sci-fi dystopian okay. type you know, like a scythe or, I mean, I'm going through Dune right now. So, I mean, just because of the movies <laughs> piqued my interest. I went with my uncle and he was talking about the differences between the book and the movie. And that was like, well, obviously I enjoy the movie. So I'm going to want to read the book because it's more in depth. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know right. of any book <laughs> that is worse than the movie. So um, just because it's way more detailed and you can get into, you know, the character development and whatnot. So, yeah, I, 
but honestly, my world is education. And, um, you know, one of the benefits, and I shared this with you is, you know, being a podcaster is that I get to speak to a lot of authors and a lot of times they'll send me books and then I get to consume those also. So I will say that the majority of my reading is within the world of education. It's not often that I just like grab a book to read for kicks and giggles. I mean, do you have time for that? <laughs> so that's like, it's interesting because I have a lot of education books that I like pick up every, you know, like I'll pick up, read a little bit because they're not sure. necessarily like, you don't have to read them like cover to cover in a short period of time. You know, you can like get bits and pieces. I would say if, if you asked me what type of book I read, it would not typically be education. Like if I'm going to pick up a book before I go to bed or whatever, it's going to be more for entertainment. Right. Um, I would say I'm more like realistic fiction or historical fiction is kind of more my jam, but yeah, I agree with you. We have, especially with our network too, we have so many authors and just knowing different people. And if it's, especially if it's a person that I've like met and I've interacted with in person, I'm like, oh, they're a really cool person. I can only imagine that their book is also really cool. You know, like you, Josh, like your book is really cool, which I noticed is over your shoulder. <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. I think it's, wait, it's there always you. backwards. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I will say it is really interesting and maybe, maybe others can relate to this, but if you if you know someone personally, but then you read their book. So Josh, I know I like texted you. This was like a, a long time ago when I started reading your book. I literally could like hear Josh's voice reading it aloud to me because you, you <laughs> feel the personality within their text, which is such a cool thing. So Josh, do you feel the same? Like when you read a book, do you hear the person kind of come through the writing? Yes. If I know them well and I've, had multiple conversations and I know the personality. Yeah, I can. Um, I'm thinking of like Todd Nisloni and Tara Martin, you know, like people that, you know, you I've known for years and have had multiple conversations with it's, or Dave Schmidt is another yes. one. Like when I read his books, um, I can hear his voice. So yeah, if it's someone that I've, you know, known for a long time, I get that. But you know, if it's someone that I've maybe had like a interview with one time and then mm -hmm. I'm reading their book, not so much. But if I've got a friendship and a relationship with them where I've, you know, had for an extended period of time, I'm just waiting for the Katie Meglin book to come out so I can hear your voice constantly. That could be a very dicey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone needs to read and hear me. At this point. <laughs> but I, I do think that's a valid point. Like if you are, if you know someone well enough that you could like know their personality, mm -hmm. then I definitely do think it shines, especially if you know some of their educational beliefs. If you've had a yes. lot of education conversations, then you know where some of their, you know, their writing has coming from or their background information as, as far as what led the story to be what it is or, you know, the, the context of it. Um, but I will say it is always really interesting when, and we have a few people in our network who have done this, that they write children's books yeah. because it is like a different perspective and shout out to Brianne Fennell who is publishing her second book. I know super excited. Um, we talked about that book on our 12 hour live. If you mm -hmm. missed that segment, strongly encourage you to go find it either on Facebook or YouTube. Um, it was like one of them, I think it was maybe the second section of the day. Yeah, it was in the morning. Yeah. And she, she talks about like how this children's book is more of like her personality and it was really kind of tailored to things that she had experienced, which I just think is really cool being able to be an adult, take your perspective that has paved the way for you as an educator and then paint it in a picture for children to be able to consume. I do think there's like a cool element to that, which just shows like the difference in how your mind might work mm -hmm. um, versus writing more of like an adult education book. Would you agree? Yeah, I thought, so like Brie gave us kind of a sneak peek before mm -hmm. the book actually released and, and you could totally feel yeah. just her family, herself in, in her writing, the pictures, whatnot. So that's kind of a fun element too, because you got the visual in addition mm -hmm. to the text. Um, and I've had several people, you know, ha that I know have written children's books. And so, um, yeah, it's just a little bit different element, but still mm -hmm. you can feel the this the personality and vibe from that person through the mm -hmm. text, which is super fun. And I'm excited for Brie. I am too. And it's also like when you think about what the purpose, what the intended audience is for a children's book is for kids who aren't thinking about best practices. They're not mm -hmm. thinking about assessment strategies or teaching strategies. You know, they're 
they're looking at many of those lessons and for face value. But when you as the educator, as the parent, as just the adult read it, you can hear so many of those underlining messages that are evident in the pictures, in the the dialogue between the characters. Like it's just a, it's a, a interesting way to teach some of those strategies, you know, whether it's social strategies or whether it's just, you know, there's like the conflict resolution, all kinds of things that can be evident, but it is cool to like hear it from the kid's view, you know, like to know this is what the adult was thinking, but this is how a kid is consuming it, which is really fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. And it's honestly, it's hard sometimes as an author to, to make that depiction mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's, it's for a very, different audience and it needs yeah. to be much more simplified and mm -hmm. it's hard sometimes to take a very complex topic and to minimize it to the degree that's needed for someone at that age so kudos mm -hmm. to those who have done a children's book because I, I have not done one and nor do i want to do one <laughs> i think it would could be extremely you, hard could you illustrate a book i could and i've been asked to do that before i've always said no though oh interesting why just not interested in that just the time that it takes okay um i i know for myself i would pour <laughs> every inch of myself into that project and i just don't have the capacity but okay yeah, trust me i've been intrigued i've almost said yes to a couple folks that have asked but um I think my wife <laughs> has always given me perspective of like, when are you going to do that? Because right. I do have my hands in a lot of things. In addition to the fact that I'm writing my own book right now, or second book. Yes, yes. The wonderful Charlie Peck. So. Yeah, and that book is going to be epic. I have obviously just heard snippets of it from the two of you, but any preview as like when a general timeline you think that? Yes. You know, when I pointed at the podcast, we just recorded and released one that we offered up that the fall is when we're shooting. So right now, August is our our hope. <laughs> we'll see if that happens. As as you know, Katie, the, the book process is extensive. So yes. um, our goal is to get it in the hands of educators so that they have a resource to begin the school year. So hopefully it comes out in August. I, I guess maybe September, but um, definitely in the fall. So folks can get that. Hopefully it'll help, you know, for implementation of practices for student behavior and, and help everyone that has the resource. So, yeah. Yeah. That it's going to be awesome. But not only that you're being mindful of the timeline of when it should get into educators hands, but also just, it is such an important topic right now, especially we hear that nonstop from educators oh, yeah. that, Student behavior is not the same that it was five years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. So it'll be a great resource to have for people as they navigate the next you know, school year and something definitely to keep your eye out. I'm sure we will do lots of things for it, Josh, and I'm sure we'll hear all about it, but I'm very excited to to get my hands on it. It's going to be, and I'm not even in charge of children right now. I'm not even <laughs> part of a classroom, but I'm like, oh my gosh, how can we spread the word of this? Because just listening to you and Charlie, especially on our 12 hour again, yeah. Um, was great to just kind of get like just a very small preview of the two powerhouse brains in one space. So very, very cool. Well, and you get yeah. to listen to hear, you know, my voice in your head more <laughs> true. in the future. It's true. Josh will be in my head. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's a scary, yeah. scary series. Yeah, scary maybe. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Josh, do you have any books that you've gotten recently that you just want to like, I know when we started talking about this, you like walked to your bookshelf and had a bunch, any that you want to like, just hold up and highlight of like, Hey, check some of these titles out. We don't need to talk a ton about them. We are. Yeah. We're getting close to being done. Right. So, yeah. well, I haven't read this book. I I'm, I have had this book though, recommended so many times and have been used on a campus. So I'm excited to like dive into this. This was sent to me. Um, through a publishing company and it's John Gordon's book, The Energy Bus for Schools. So Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up on the screen just because shout out to them because you know they sent me a, a free book. So thank yeah. you for that. Um, so I'm gonna dive into this um, seven ways to improve your school culture, remove Ooh. negativity, energize your teachers, and empower your students. So the subtitle alone gets me excited. So um, yeah. I know a lot of people have done that as a book study, just the energy bus, but this one's specific to schools. Um I'm going to shout out Coach Johnson, who was just on my podcast. 
um, a coach in a miracle. He talked about this story where he has an autistic student that um, was a manager for his team and got into the game um, on senior night and scored a lot of points. And the the student won an ESPY, um, so that's a ESPN award, and beat out Kobe Bryant uh, <laughs> for the award. Um, so yeah, it's it was a fun story, and so that book's um, you know for educators and just kind of taking that story and and how it translates to helping leaders um, and just school culture. So excited about that one, um, Katie. You can't really see it, but I I not only have this shelf of books. I also have two more in my office full of, of educators. So um, those are two that I just received, but I can, okay. I could go on forever. Okay. I am going to be honest. They don't stay in this room because I know if they stay in this room, then I won't necessarily <laughs> eat them up. So Jeff, we actually were just laughing because I, I did have aspire to lead back here for a really long time. And he was like, Oh, isn't slot back there. And I'm like, well, no, because if it stays back there, I don't touch it. So I have to eventually like move it somewhere else so that I actually consume it. So um, but yes, we do love when authors send us books. We love to give them a shout out. We love to mm -hmm. consume them. It always helps us be a little bit better. So if you yep. are someone that's like, hey, I would love to have a shout out for my book, please send your book to either Josh or I. We're happy to mm -hmm. highlight that. And um, but yeah, if you have ideas of books that you've read recently that you'd love to share out, whether they're for entertainment purposes or for education, we just love to share books. That was, I think, the pr purpose of this listener question is just to get some more ideas, especially as I hate to say this, but summer is on the horizon. It might be a very far <laughs> horizon, but it is on the horizon. So if you're interested in kind of building up your summer reading list, feel free to drop some ideas or ask questions of, hey, has anyone read this one? Is it a good one? Um, we would love to kind of hear some of your ideas. So Josh, this was a fun topic. It was a fun light topic for a Friday. I'm glad we were able to kind of talk yeah. And we have some recommendations on the, the website too. Yes. So if you yeah, head over do. to teachbetter.com, um, there's a book section that you can go to if you're looking for recommendations. Yep. We're always adding to the different titles on, on that page too. Yep. And we know that there are tons of people, one of our ambassadors, Aaron, just published a book um, within the last week or so. So we know that there are tons of you who are doing phenomenal work and our authors. So please continue to share your work, share it with us. And we are just excited for you and excited to continue reading alongside you. That's awesome. awesome. Thanks, Josh. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Thank Have you. a great weekend. Yes. Hey, Teach Better community. Thank you so much for joining the Teach Better Today morning show every single weekday at 7 a.m. Eastern. We have so many resources for you outside of this live stream at teachbetter.com, including blogs, podcasts, and professional development that will bring our team to your school. Wherever you are listening from this morning, please make sure you are sharing and celebrating the incredible educators in this world. And hey, if you are listening over on a podcast to Teach Better Talk, we would love a five-star review. <laughs> the comments are always so entertaining. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow.